this uh, topic, uh, I, I have addressed uh, a question to uh, Dr. Nicola Baldo about which tools can be used for the design and development of self-organized networks. CTTC has uh, a lot of uh, things to do, to say and to, to show about that and please go ahead and answer the question to all of us. Hey, thank you very much, Albert, for the introduction. So, well, very, very broadly speaking, with a kind of rough simplification which helps to understand the problem, uh, there are two big methods to do the uh, design and development of a self-organized network algorithm, which has been considered was in the past for the development of several wireless technologies, like for example, 3G and so on. And, well, you can do simulations, and you can have a test bed with a prototype and testing in a real field. So the good thing about doing simulation is basically you, you just prepare a, a simulation program that models uh, with a general simplification the system being considered and you try to uh, evaluate uh, so the, the, the most peculiar traits of the wireless technology you are dealing with and uh, on top of this you develop some algorithm, you test it and then uh, you see the performance in several cases, and well, well, you try several algorithms, when you find a good one, you say, well, cool, I have a good algorithm that I can implement then in my product. And I can develop some patents on it, I can make a lot of money on it, I can uh, uh, be more competitive, have a better product with respect to the competition. And unfortunately, the bad thing of simulation, well, doing this is very, very good to do. Uh, the bad thing uh, is that there is really a strong difference between simulations and uh, the real world. So when you do this final step of taking the, the, the algorithm, the smart solution, the smart self organized network algorithm in the simulation, you take it to the prototype, you will realize that, well, first of all, there are a lot of uh, things that you did not consider because often the simulation is very much simplified because you want to have good results. There are so many aspects like protocol details, implementation details that you did not consider. There are non idealities you did not model, like for example that uh, hardware resources are limited. Uh, there are um, real phenomena that maybe you modeled in a way that was not accurate enough, like radio propagation is the most typical one, but, but also uh, I mean, uh, channel errors and so on is another typical case. So that in the end, the algorithm you developed in simulation often is not really fit for a for, uh, uh, product stage. So it takes a lot, really a lot of time, then when you try to implement that on the product to, to refine it in order to have a product that you can actually employ. The other method for designing and developing uh, a self-organized network algorithm is to go for a test bed. In that case, <coughs> it means that before actually testing your, your product on, on the field in a real deployment, you have in the laboratory kind of prototype implementation. Uh, you take existing uh, prototype uh, boards, for example, uh, like uh, that you are using for in designing the next uh, generation products. Uh, you implement your algorithm there, and you hook some of them in maybe some channel emulator, or maybe you can have a very small deployment in the lab using uh, over-the-air communication. And then you try to, to run experiments with that. The good thing is that the performance you get can be really, really close to, to the one of the real deployment of a, a rolled out network, let's say. Because you are using basically a real hardware, you are using a real propagation environment, or maybe very, very good uh, propagation models if you use a, a channel emulator. But the problems are that it takes just ages to move. So, working directly with a prototype, if you want to test several algorithms, it will take a lot of time to implement all of them. And then, it also takes a lot of time to do the experiments to evaluate them. So. That, for example, if there is a, some error in the design and then you, you need to refine the algorithm in order to iterate over all these, uh, you know, refined version of the algorithm, uh, design it, then implement it, then test it again, uh, then find another error and start all over again, it takes really a lot of time. Simulation was much better in this respect, so we really wanted to have something uh, more like simulation with respect to the speed and more like tested with respect to, to uh, being close to the real world. Another issue with testbeds is that, uh, well, the results often are not reproducible in the sense that, 
you know, maybe you try uh, deploy some nodes, for example, you could have a test bit here and put some nodes. Then maybe in one day there is a lot of people working, you get some results that uh, cause bad performance, you think there is a flow in the design, you could go back to the algorithm and tune it so that it will uh, address this problem, but then maybe the next situation in which you test, uh, who knows, maybe there is less people walking around, maybe the weather is doing something strange, maybe the stars are aligned in some fancy way that causes your product to behave differently. So it's difficult to, to isolate the randomness of the uh, experiment uh, environment from the actual behavior that you want to address with your algorithm. Uh, and, and again, this is something that, on the other hand, can be done uh, very well in simulation. Because in simulation, you can repeat every experiment uh, in the same condition because the environment is entirely under your control. So the question is, can we develop some test platform that allow us to, to get the best of both worlds? And, <clears throat> and well, the answer that uh, we try to come up with is uh, uh, the LINA project, which is a project that was uh, uh, initiated and funded by Ubiquitous and we, at CPC we are very, very glad of this collaboration. And basically we have developed such type of, uh, uh, of say, more product-oriented simulator specifically for LTE and PPC technology. And the idea is basically to have uh, a platform that allows to develop self-organized network algorithms for LTE uh, with primarily, for example, radio resource management in mind, but also say, uh, other type of resource management algorithm, for example, taking into consideration uh, backhaul uh, limitation or end-to-end -end communication problems uh, are an objective to be tested on this type of platform. And um, the idea is that this platform should be uh, available for uh, all uh, vendors and also for operators to compare the performance of self-organized network algorithms proposed by different vendors. And, uh, well, we say that this uh, evaluation platform is product-oriented for, well, a few specific reasons. The first one is that the whole simulator is designed around the uh, MAX scheduler API specification by, standardized by the uh, small cell forum, uh, which is an API that is used for uh, real products. The scheduler in a LTE system, in a base station, is basically the, uh, uh, the place where all the intelligence is put, because where you decide for the allocation of radio resources. <coughs> so by supporting the same API that you find in real products, by supporting this API in the simulator, uh, we are sure that, for example, the, the, the model that we have in the simulator for the MAC layer, the RLC layer, basically the radio protocol stack, is uh, accurate enough with respect to what you have in a real product. Uh, there will be minor differences, but for example, this will be way, way better than a lot of uh, system level simulators that have been used previously, for example, with the 3G networks. Uh, and it is crucial in LTE to have such type of detailed modeling because uh, a lot of like smart decisions about the radio usage and radio resource management are done uh, in a uh, very dynamic fashion. So like, for example, you decide about the resources to assign to every uh, uh, different user in a, a transmission time interval, which is one millisecond, that's very quick. And normally system level simulation uh, tools, they deal with a, a much uh, coarser time scale, like they work on the granularity of sessions started by users, maybe when a user starts a call, when a user terminates a call, and evaluate the resources on, on a higher level. And in addition to the Max Scheduler API specification, we have a fairly accurate model of the LTE APC protocol stack. For example, we have uh, basically a complete implementation of the RLC and Cloud Mode and Cloud uh, Mode protocol. Uh, we are working now on a, uh, an accurate implementation also of the RLC protocol. We take into account the control resources the radio resources that are needed to transmit control information in the network, which is again a thing which is normally not done in uh, many uh, system level simulations. And we do introduce some verification because otherwise we would just end up with a, a, a test bed or, uh, which would take ages, uh, ages to develop and would be maybe too complex to work with. We do some simplification at the physical layer and at the 
in the channel model. And what we do is that we use some uh, channel and physical layer model specifically designed for LTE. Uh, for example, the channel models are uh, specifically aimed at uh, uh, macro and small cell scenarios, like in urban deployments with the presence of buildings, uh, to model situations that are expected to, to become in real deployments. Another peculiar trait of this uh, simulator is that it is open source. Uh, it means that the development is done uh, in an open way to the community. So uh, the code is developed at CPC, then it is uh, continuously published to the community, and we accept because we are very happy when we have contribution to the community. Uh, we already started to have several contributors uh, from, uh, well, both from uh, academia and also more recently uh, some industry leaders that arose uh, in this platform. And well, um, it's open source, uh, you know, there is a lot of open source codes around and it's to be uh, very clear uh, what, what we mean with open source. In our case, it means that it's a license with uh, the GPL license. What does it mean? It means that, uh, well, not only you have access to the code, but you can basically take the code and reuse it and modify it freely as far as you do not uh, uh, further restrict the, the, the uh, the rights uh, to people who to whom you might give your code. If you want to do some proprietary extension and not tell it to anybody, it's fine. But if you share it with somebody else, then you need to share it in a in exactly in the same uh, open and free fashion. And well, the reason we, we did it is that basically we wanted to foster uh, the, well, first of all the early adoption of the simulator by other partners and also contribution. And the other thing is that, you know, having an open source tool uh, makes the tool itself more trustable because uh, if it's open and people can have a look at it and uh, try it out. Uh, the, if there is any problem with the simulator, say a model is not realistic or a model gives some problem, people will find it out and will point their finger towards us or towards whoever developed it. And the idea is that in the long term, uh, for example, say a company is uh, developing a very, very smart self-organized network algorithm and is uh, uh, showing results obtained with the simulator. If it's obtained with the Lena simulator, the results uh, will be trustable because people know the simulator because they can repeat the same uh, uh, results and uh, they are confident that uh, basically there is no trick under the tool. On the other hand, uh, say, for example, you are an operator and uh, you are interested to buy a self-organized network product, an LTE small cell, uh, you know, popular example. And say that the potential vendor that you are interested in to give you these results, say that, oh, the product works really, really well. And how do you obtain the, the results? Well, I just use my proprietary simulation and what does it model? Well, it's confidential, I cannot tell you. So, if you are the operator in that situation, well, either you trust very, very much the vendor, maybe, or, well, uh, maybe you suspect that there might be some trick under the hood. Uh, and why? Because uh, vendors can have interest in, you know, showing the only maybe the good side of performance and not uh, uh, maybe hiding a bit some of the bad side of the product. So the fact that the simulator is not developed directly by a vendor, but it is a, is a we, we don't have products ourselves on the market, so we are kind of an independent institution producing the simulator. So a kind of guarantees that you can use it, and uh, well, the, the, the results that you get uh, will be reliable. And even if you don't trust as an institution, the code is there. You can take it, you can look it, you can play with it, uh, and in the end, with so many people in the community uh, looking at the source code, uh, we'll be sure that in the long term there will be no problem, and people will trust. Um, just to mention a few possible target applications for this simulator. Uh, well, the first and most straightforward application is the development of schedulers for LTE uh, base station, so including micro cells and small cells. Uh, this because uh, we include the small cell tensor forum, well, small cell forum, uh, max scheduler API. Uh, so you can develop exactly the same scheduler you would put into a real product and then uh, port the same implementation to, to, to a 
product, or maybe testing the prototype, which is still a good thing to do, to make sure everything is working correctly, but I mean, the efforts will be much, much reduced with respect to, say, a traditional system level solution. Uh, then other applications are, for example, the development of radio resource management algorithms that, for example, involve the interaction between the multiple base stations in order to coordinate, uh, on the same line, also inter-site interference coordination is interesting. Uh, <coughs> uh, we are currently working on support on the simulator for the X2 interface, in which is analyzed by HTTPD and which provides the, the, the uh, protocol support for inter-site interference coordination. Uh, in a general sense, it supports you know, the uh, simulation of uh, the news network uh, scenarios uh, following the 3 gpp definition of hacknets, but also more, say, broad type of, a more broad definition of hacknets that might involve other technologies such as, for example, Wi-Fi. Uh, the reason for this is that, so the LENA simulation model is developed as part of the NS3 open source simulator. Uh, so the LENA model itself focuses on IP, but uh, the NS3 open source simulator, simulator provides other models, such as, for example, a Wi-Fi model, so TCP IP protocol stack implementation, uh, IP authority six implementation, lots of different applications. You can also use it for WiMAPs and for other technologies. So all this together provides a very, very powerful tool which you can use to simulate, for example, uh, multi red scenarios, which are very popular in the also, for the same reason, since we have, uh, thanks to the NST simulator, uh, we can also use, you know, uh, complete TCPIP protocol stack and real applications. Uh, we can actually test uh, the quality of service provided by self organized network solution on an end-to-end -end fashion. And again, this is something that normally you cannot do with, uh, say, a system-level LT simulator. Uh, well, I already mentioned multi-rack networks. And finally, another item that is very interesting to do with these tools is a cognitive LTE system where you might investigate, uh, say, uh, intelligent ways of using uh, the LTE spectrum, first and foremost, you know, with dynamic configuration, possibly evaluating uh, the possibility of the sharing spectrum among operators, uh, maybe using uh, uh, different uh, uh, type of operators such as the high power and low power operator scenario that was uh, uh, pushed forward by Ofcom uh, in recent quarters. And also you could test different things like uh, uh, LTE system in the TP white spaces or ISM bands, why not? The simulator really provides support for doing that. Uh, well, I think that's what was the talk. So I will leave it to Albert for the final. Visit cttc.es for more information.